Remember that brontosaurus toy you had as a kid? The long necked dinosaur in every museum gift shop? Well, according to science, it was alive for 112 years. Every textbook, every museum display, every children's book featuring Brontosaurus was technically wrong. The scientific community had declared this beloved dinosaur nothing more than a misidentified Apatosaurus. But if you're like most people, you probably never stop believing in the Thunder Lizard. And guess what? Your childhood instincts were right all along. The Brontosaurus is back, and its resurrection story is more dramatic than any Hollywood comeback. Picture two respected scientists literally destroying fossils to prevent their rival from studying them. This was paleontology in the 1870s when scientific discovery transformed into something closer to warfare. Othniel Charles Marsh from Yale and Edward Drinker Cope from Philadelphia were both brilliant men whose personal hatred would reshape dinosaur science forever. Their rivalry began over a simple mistake when Cope placed a plesiosaur head on the wrong end of its body and Marsh publicly humiliated him for the error. From that moment, these two paleontologists dedicated their careers to destroying each other. The competition between Marsh and Cope led to rushed classifications and deliberate sabotage of fossil sites across the American West. Both men hired teams of fossil collectors who operated more like spies than scientists. They would race to promising dig sites, sometimes arriving at the same location and setting up competing camps within sight of each other. The frantic pace of discovery during this period pushed both scientists to name new species before proper analysis could be completed. Speed mattered more than accuracy when your reputation depended on publishing first. The specific incidents of espionage bribery and the fossil destruction that characterised this scientific war sound almost too dramatic to believe. Marsh's collectors would pay local workers to steal fossils from Cope sites, while Cope's team would deliberately damage specimens to prevent Marsh from studying them. When one team finished extracting fossils from a quarry, they would sometimes blow up the remaining rock face with dynamite to prevent their rivals from finding anything else. Workers switched sides regularly, selling information about new discoveries to the highest bidder. Marsh's discovery of Brontosaurus in 1879 emerged directly from this competitive pressure. His team unearthed a partial skeleton in Wyoming's Morrison Formation, and the rush to beat Cope to publication led Marsh to hastily classify the find as a new genus and species. The original Brontosaurus specimen was incomplete, notably missing a skull. Rather than wait for a, a proper skull to be discovered, Marsh reconstructed one using parts from a different quarry, assuming they belonged to the same species. This hasty decision would prove catastrophic. The incorrect skull attachment that Marsh made in his rush to publish would haunt Brontosaurus for over a century. He had actually placed the head of a Camarasaurus on the body of what he called Brontosaurus excelsus, creating a chimera that never existed in nature. This scientific rivalry accidentally created one of paleontology's most enduring mistakes, and the consequences of these rushed decisions would soon catch up with the Thunder Lizard in ways that neither Marsh nor Cope could have anticipated. In 1903, a single paleontologist research paper would sentence the world's most famous dinosaur to scientific death. Elmer Riggs, a specialist in fossil mammals working at the Field Columbia Museum in Chicago, began a systematic comparison of Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus specimens that would change everything. His methodical approach stood in stark contrast to the rushed classifications of the Bone Wars era as he carefully measured and analyzed bone structures from both dinosaurs. The mounting evidence that Riggs uncovered threatened Brontosaurus's very existence as a distinct species. His detailed analysis of vertebrae, ribs and limb bones revealed that the differences between Brontosaurus excelsus and Apatosaurus ajax were far smaller than Marsh had claimed. The bone measurements showed variations that fell within the normal range you would expect from individual animals of the same species rather than indicating separate genera. Riggs examined the cervical vertebrae, the structure of the neural arches and the proportions of the limb bones finding consistent patterns that suggested these fossils represented the same type of dinosaur. The scientific principle of taxonomic priority sealed Brontosaurus's fate before the analysis even began. 
since Apatosaurus had been named first in 1877, two years before Brontosaurus in 1879, the earlier name took precedence according to the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. This meant that regardless of which name was more popular or better known, Apatosaurus would win by default. The species previously called Brontosaurus excelsus was officially renamed Apatosaurus excelsus, effectively erasing the thunder lizard from scientific literature. The immediate impact on museums, textbooks and scientific literature was swift and systematic as Brontosaurus was erased from official records. The American Museum of Natural History faced a particularly awkward situation with their famous skeleton display which had introduced the public to sauropods and become one of their most popular exhibits. The skeleton was actually a composite reconstruction built primarily from an incomplete specimen found near the Nine Mile Crossing of the Little Medicine Bow River in Wyoming supplemented with bones from other locations to fill the gaps. Museum visitors suddenly found themselves confused as the beloved dinosaur they had come to see was relabeled overnight. Some scientists resisted the classification change, believing Riggs's conclusion was premature. Paleontologists like Henry Fairfield Osborne and William Diller Matthew at the American Museum initially disagreed with the reclassification, contributing to the slow acceptance of the new nomenclature across the scientific community. By 1903, scientists had officially declared that Brontosaurus never existed as a distinct genus and systematically removed it from scientific recognition. Yet this scientific execution would create a strange phenomenon that nobody anticipated. While scientists erased Brontosaurus from their books, Hollywood toy makers and the public kept the thunder lizard alive in ways that would have shocked the paleontologists who declared it extinct. The dinosaur became more famous after its scientific death than it ever was while officially recognized, creating a bizarre situation where millions of people loved a creature that technically didn't exist. This growing disconnect between scientific accuracy and public perception throughout the 20th century would define one of the strangest chapters in paleontological history. Windsor Mackay's 1914 animated film, Gertie the Dinosaur, introduced audiences to a charming brontosaurus that danced and performed tricks based on the Apatosaurus skeleton at the American Museum of Natural History. The 1925 silent film, The Lost World, featured a spectacular battle between a brontosaurus and an allosaurus utilizing special effects by Willis O'Brien that brought the thunder lizard to life on screen. These early portrayals established Brontosaurus as the quintessential dinosaur in popular consciousness, embedding the long-necked giant in the collective imagination. Museum gift shops continued selling Brontosaurus toys, while the actual exhibits displayed Apatosaurus creating a confusing experience for visitors who couldn't understand why the skeleton labels didn't match their purchases. The American Museum of Natural History initially mounted a Brontosaurus skeleton in 1905 but was slow to adopt the scientific change not remounting the skeleton with the correct head and Apatosaurus label until the 1970s. This delay created decades of mixed messages about what visitors were actually seeing. The public rejected the scientific consensus for psychological reasons that ran deeper than simple stubbornness. People had formed emotional connections to the name Brontosaurus, which sounded more memorable and dramatic than the clinical Apatosaurus. The Sinclair Oil Corporation's adoption of the Brontosaurus as its mascot in 1930 further solidified the dinosaur's place in American culture, placing fiberglass dinosaur models at gas stations across the country and making the image one of the most recognizable symbols in American business. Educators struggled with teaching about a dinosaur that was both everywhere and officially nowhere, facing the impossible task of explaining why every movie, book and toy was technically wrong. The US Postal Service's 1989 decision to issue a Brontosaurus stamp sparked controversy with critics decrying the use of a scientifically outdated name. The Postal Service defended its choice, stating that the name was used because it was more familiar to the general population. Economic forces kept Brontosaurus alive in commercial products and entertainment as the dinosaur industry relied on recognizable names and stable classifications. This scientifically deleted dinosaur managed to survive in popular culture for over 100 years through sheer public determination, setting the stage for modern scientific techniques that would finally vindicate the public's stubborn loyalty to their beloved Thunder Lizard.
In 2015, a team of researchers armed with powerful computers would overturn 112 years of scientific consensus with a single study, Emmanuel Chop, from the new University of Lisbon, working alongside Octavio Matias and Roger Benson, launched an ambitious project to analyze every known diplodocid specimen they could access. Their goal was to settle the confusion within the Diplodocidae family once and for all using methods that earlier paleontologists could never have imagined. The massive scale of their analysis required examining 477 anatomical features across 81 specimens, a process that consumed five years and demanded numerous trips to museum collections throughout Europe and the United States. This comprehensive data set represented the most thorough examination of sauropod anatomy ever attempted, creating a mountain of measurements that would have overwhelmed researchers working with traditional methods. The team discovered patterns that had remained hidden for over a century buried within the subtle variations of bone structure and proportion. The specific anatomical differences they identified painted a picture of two distinct evolutionary paths. Brontosaurus specimens showed proportionally wider and taller vertebrae compared to Apatosaurus, suggesting different feeding strategies or environmental pressures had shaped their development. The skull of Brontosaurus appeared more elongated and gracile, while Apatosaurus displayed a broader, more robust cranial structure. These variations extended throughout the skeleton, creating a consistent pattern of morphological distinction. Advanced statistical analysis revealed patterns that earlier paleontologists couldn't detect with simpler comparative methods. The team examined these 477 morphological characters using objective mathematical techniques that quantified the differences between fossil genera and species. This statistical approach allowed them to measure variation with unprecedented precision moving beyond subjective visual comparisons to concrete numerical analysis. The team argued that these differences were as significant as those between lions and tigers representing genuine evolutionary divergence rather than individual variation within a single species. They classified two additional species as Brontosaurus parvus and Brontosaurus yanapin expanding the thunder lizard's family tree. The immediate controversy within the scientific community was intense as some experts questioned whether the observed differences truly justified separate genera. The study's findings emphasized fundamental questions about dinosaur classification and the reliability of century-old taxonomic decisions. One criticism focused on the exclusion of skull analysis since paleontologists disagreed about whether a true Apatosaurus excelsus skull had ever been found. Mike Taylor noted that the recognition of Brontosaurus as separate from Apatosaurus was only the tip of the iceberg, suggesting that sauropod diversity remained largely unexplored. The specific anatomical evidence that convinced scientists in 2015 that Brontosaurus was truly distinct came from this comprehensive morphological analysis, finally validating what the public had believed all along. This resurrection demonstrated how scientific truth evolves with improved methods and technology. The Brontosaurus story reveals that sometimes the public's instincts about science can be more accurate than expert consensus. For over a century, millions of people refused to accept that their beloved Thunder Lizard was scientifically invalid, clinging to the name through movies, toys and popular culture. Their stubborn loyalty proved justified when modern analysis vindicated the dinosaur's existence in 2050. This resurrection teaches us that scientific truth is always evolving and today's certainties may be tomorrow's corrections. The same advanced techniques that restored Brontosaurus might reveal other dismissed theories deserve fresh examination with modern tools and perspectives.